Comaris, George Zimmerman's attorney. He's with us now from Orlando. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? What is your response to these charges filed by the special prosecutor? She has seen the information and the discovery. I haven't yet, so it's hard for me to really comment on why she did what she did. We're going to wait until we find out the information. Uh, as, as we understand it, you met for about an hour with your client, George Zimmerman, last night. Uh, up until you took on this case, you were a legal analyst in the area. You'd actually been weighing in on this case, and as recently as Tuesday, you talked about the previous attorneys uh, who were very public in why they stepped down from defending George Zimmerman, and you said that their press conference could potentially hurt the case moving forward. Are you concerned about that at this point? I don't think it's going to have any lasting effect. I, I was concerned that there was some presentation of how things may have happened and that that may be determined or believed to be Mr. Zimmerman's story and that that could curtail things, but I'm not too worried about it going forward. Do you know what happened? No, I have not discussed Mr. that. Mr. Zimmerman did not talk to you about what happened? I did not want to or need to have that conversation with him. I just met him for the first time last night, I want to chat with him, find out how he was doing and give him an idea of what's coming up in the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks, and next couple of months. What did you tell him is coming up? We hopefully will have an appearance before the court today at 1.30. I'm hoping the court will consider a bond motion, may or may not. If not, we'll have a bond motion shortly thereafter. I hope to get him out. I need him out for my purposes to help me in preparing his defense, and that it's going to be a very tough and stressful time for him. Is there a risk of flight? I don't believe so. Let's, you know, Mr. Zimmerman had been in touch with law enforcement even during the period of time that he was unrepresented and he voluntarily came in, uh, drove in, met with the officers, um, had a very good interaction with them. He's actually been in touch with them ongoing. So no, I don't think he's a risk so, of flight at all. It, could you, I just want to clarify a couple of things in, um, based on what you just said. So you're saying he was actually in touch with law enforcement this entire time over these last few weeks, even then when there was a question of whether or not he was even in the state of Florida? Not discussing the facts of the case at all, but just keeping in touch with an agency who was trying to monitor him and make sure he was both safe and that they knew where he was. So they knew his whereabouts. And, and how is he doing? Uh, obviously, you met with him last night. How is he handling all of this in this charge of second-degree murder? It, well, it, being charged with any crime like this, of course, is very stressful. He's frustrated. He's tired. He's stressed. Um, so we just need to sort of take it one day at a time. Frustrated by what? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. He's frustrated, you say. Frustrated because he hasn't had a chance to tell his story? Frustrated about what? Well, he has been in, obviously, hiding for weeks and weeks and weeks without any true support, family, friends, being able to walk down the street. So I think just being in that situation for weeks on end has had its effect on him. But I think he's dealing with it okay. What do you expect to be his defense? I have no idea yet. It would be presumptuous of me. I truly haven't seen the first sheet of paper in the case. Obviously, the issue of self-defense has been in the papers and in the media since day one, so I'm certain that's going to be one facet of what we present, but I just don't know the case well enough yet. Mark O'Mara, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Sure thing. Take care.